Welcome to the big show, everybody. Tonight. It's a privilege to see you guys here. Joy to the world, the Lord is 
I had to welcome December in just right. It's nice to be able to come in and out from the cold. Mistaking clouds for mountains, oh. 
Miss Betsy Tinney on the cello tonight. Miss Gelly Wersner on the violin. Aaron Brule on the djembe tonight. Yeah, my name is Clint, and it's nice to hang out with you guys tonight. Nice to see some familiar faces and some new faces tonight. I'll take them both. Two lattes walked into a bar and... <laughs> Two lattes walked into a bar. <laughs> I can't remember how the rest of it goes, though.
die beneath the white cascading waters and she may beg and she may plead and she may argue with her logic and tell me all the things I lose and really have no value and in the end she'll surely know I wasn't born to follow are flowing and run across the valley beneath the sacred mountains and wander through the forest the trees have leaves of prisms that break the light in colors that no one knows the names of Born to follow. Crossroads between wrong and right Awaking the moment at the strike of midnight Any move that I make will take me from here You can leave me in the dark With nowhere left to turn Still my light will shine bright Oh, my mind it will burn but There is still one thing that can't take away open wide Oh, I live by the rise in the fall of the tide I will head with my bow and face it into the wind You can cast me out to sea while the storm rages on And I'll be carried upon the waves like the chords of a song but There is still one thing that can't take away to lay my head there is still one 
thing they can't take away. In a country bought by greed and hungry for more, with a crook for a king who has sold us to war, while fighting I'll die, we all know where I stand. Just a little more cello in the monitors, just a twitch. Like that. Small twitch. But not a seizure, right? No, no seizures. <laughs> no cello seizures. That is a bad, bad idea. Let's play Drifted. Oh. And then okay. we can start, we'll make sure we got plenty of cello. But a privilege to get a chance to play with these musicians and come together on a night. Find our one, play it out, loud and strong, or like a whisper. Captain 
has failed me and I'm drifting much too close Finding where the music wants to go tonight. And a lot of what happens on the first Friday of the month is to come back in and connect in with you guys. And I've been playing a bunch of music recently. I've been playing a bunch. Um, I'll be playing a bunch this weekend. Tomorrow, uh, we're 
at the um, I'll be at the uh, Redmond Lights celebration. Be playing from five to seven there near the Star Tree, kind of on the trail behind the Matador outside. And there's if you haven't been a part of Redmond Lights, it's this beautiful light celebration that happens from City Hall down this new cultural corridor that they're building. And so there'll be dancers and fire dancers and singers and uh, sparkly lights. And so, and we'll be there singing. Um, and then the very next day on Sunday, I'll be up at the in Greenwood playing at the Pocket Theater promoting the film that I was in called Brother. And there'll be a, a screening of the film and we'll do a concert with a band and the uh, music from the film. That's on Sunday evening, yeah. And so that's, uh, that's this weekend of uh, crazy music and, uh, and playing out. And um, and playing what's truthful in the heart. And um, it's impossible to be alive and awake in America right now and not know and feel somehow the struggle that's going on in America right now is real. The struggle is real. It's um, this uh, crazy fact that you think that we're, at a, we're in a culture of awareness at a certain level. And then, and we've come so far. And then you get hit with this, oh shit, we still need to go further. And it's still taking people being beings of light, making a change to figure out what the high road is to work with all sides and all peoples in our country. And uh, the um, Sarah, my beloved partner, Sarah, who held the heart of this community here since we've left here to be part of different communities and growing, Sarah has connected in with a community in Ferguson over this last, oh, I don't know, six or seven months. This young girl that hangs out in a place like Soul Food, a little coffee shop in Ferguson, and they're artists, they're trying to play for change, and they connect in with uh, Sarah and I. So for a little bit, we were getting phone calls of their coffee shop with SWAT teams coming in, and I couldn't imagine what it'd be like in, in Soul Food if SWAT teams were coming in. Oh. Like everybody <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> So to Mr. Michael Brown in Ferguson, to Eric Garner in New York, to Darian Hunt in Utah, to the many people that are, um, has, have lost their lives and to their family and loved ones. And if we could just take a moment and to send out a prayer to the country who is uh, angry. <laughs> Just take a moment to breathe, because we can. And there's a reason for it and a light at the end of the tunnel. Lights out tonight, trouble in the heart. Playing got a head on collision, smashing through my guts. Man, I'm caught in a crossfire. That I don't understand There's a thing you know for sure I don't give a damn But the same old played out scenes I don't give a damn For just the in-betweens I got my heart I got my soul Got control right now That you gave me And I believe in the faith That can raise me And I believe And I hope and I pray One day this may raise me Above these bad lands You gotta live it every day And the broken heart it stands Is the price we all must pay I'll keep pushing till it's understood until these battlelands start treating us good Push, 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 stand Get your 
back burning, working in the wheel Till you get your facts, learn Like I got my facts yep. Learn real good right now All men want to be rich Rich men want to be king And the king is satisfied Tell he rules everything Gonna go out tonight I'm gonna find out what I got I'm gonna find out who I am Stand right here the love that you gave me and I believe in the faith that can save me and I believe and I hope and I pray the one day this may raise me above these bad lands gotta live it every day broken party stands is the price we all must pay all people Tales understood till the battle and start treating us good hush till they tell us the truth. Look us in our eyes. We can see the truth right there from our eyes. I watched it, I saw it with my own eyes. Oh, I saw it with my own eyes. of these bad lands you gotta live it every day and the broken hearted stance is the price we all must pay oh keep pushing till it's understood until these bad lands start treating us good push until they tell us the truth Lights out tonight, trouble in the heartland. Thank you. As a prayer and a little bit of rage. I'd like to take this next moment and bring up my good, good friend, my brother, my little brother, Mikhail, my soul brother. Mikhail um, holds this heart of this place here. And when I first met Mikhail, I met him through poetry. Met him here through Rumi. Rumi, the poet Rumi, being drunk on God, being um, uh, statically alive, being um, joyful in the mystery, lost in it all. And. Um, and uh, this month is the Urs of Rumi. Oh, Mikhail, tell you more, but let's 
Let's welcome up Mikhail to the stage here. We've decided to uh, bring some Rumi to solstice this year and um, wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of it. So on, uh, at sunset on winter solstice on December 21st, uh, that's between 4 and 5 at Anderson Park in the Adair cabin. We've got that place next to the fire, pass around tea and treats and play music and sing and uh, and read some Rumi right as the sun is setting on solstice. And so uh, an open invitation to you on the holidays this year. And we put it right there before dinner, after the daytime. So if you want to come in and do a little singing and diving into the mystery and bring a little Rumi into your hearts. So um, Rumi. went to Portland not too long ago and got to see Coleman Barks for the first time in my life uh, with Clint at a theater with uh, Michael Mead. And uh, it was a very magical evening. Um, he's kind of my roomy mentor if I have, if I have one. And so I went to the library today and did some pages here because what I wanted to read was scattered all over the book um, called The Big Red Book and it's uh, a book that he did uh, celebrating mystical love and friendship and I just took bits and pieces of it and put it together here for you this evening in this book you find these words Compassion builds a door. Restlessness cuts the key. Fire is whispering a secret in smoke's ear. With me, it becomes fragrance and then disappears altogether. The knots untie and open into absence as you do with me, my friend, eaten by flame and smoked out in the sky. Bread must dissolve to turn into thought. This way leads through humiliation and contempt. We have tried the fullness of presence and now is the time for desolation. Love is pulling us out by the ears to school. Love wants us clean of resentment and those impulses that misguide our souls. Love will tell us the rest of what we need to know soon. Then we will be deeply asleep and profoundly awake simultaneously like the cave companions. You don't have bad days and good days. You don't feel sometimes brilliant, sometimes dumb. There's no studying, no scholarly thinking having to do with love. But there is a great deal of plotting and secret touching and nights you cannot remember at all. There is a strange frenzy in my head of birds flying, 
each particle circulating on its own. Is the one I love everywhere? Not until someone dissolves can he or she know what union is. That descends only into emptiness. Soul of this world, no life, no world remain. No beautiful men and women longing. Only this ancient love circling the holy black stone of nothing where the lover is the love, the horizon and everything within it. You are inside the meaning, not words. You are the heart itself, not any language of the heart. You are the essence within the universe, not the universe. You are neither absence nor existence. I am the soul in a hundred thousand bodies. These words, I say, do not belong to me. I say them, but I'm not fully aware of what I'm saying. There is energy in them and something that depletes energy. I have no control over any of that. I know they come from my heart, from my love, but I still do not know those words, whose they are. I am the soul in a hundred thousand bodies. What is the soul? What is a body? I am both. And there's someone else I am as well in order to please that one. If you could be master of yourself for one moment, the knowledge that the prophets have would be yours. The beauty the whole world wants, the emptiness, the beauty of absence would appear in the mirror of your seeing. You are in a, an ocean, in a drop of dew. All the universes in a thin sack of blood. What are these pleasures then, these joys, these worlds that you keep reaching for, hoping they will make you more alive. There is a glory that breathes life back into a corpse and brings strangers together as friends. Call that one back who fills the held out road of a thorn bush with flowers, who clears muddied minds, who gives a two day old infant wisdom beyond anyone's learning. What baby, you ask? There's a fountain, a passion circulating. I'm not saying this well, because I am too much in the scatterbrain sweetness. Listen anyway, it must be said, there are eyes that see into eternity a presence beyond the power and the magic of shamans. Let that in again. Let that in sink to the floor. I look for one simple open enough to see the friend. I want an empty shell to hold this pearl. I want one who can quit seeing himself, fill with God, and instead of being irritated by interruption and daily resentments, feel those as kindness. Again, I want one 
who can quit seeing himself or herself. Fill with God and instead of being irritated by interruption, which is our life, anyway, and daily resentments that overtake us no matter what, feel those as kindness. Sit with lovers and choose and choose their state. Do not stay long with those who are not living in the heart. There is one who shines inside the face, whose hair grows with the world, whose eyes recognize you, whose body is all honey and milk, who holds absolute beauty in an embrace, full morning without a dawn, essence without attributes, living without grief, twilight with no dark streaks in it. How can this be? Can the sun borrow light from the sky? Can a rose smell like jasmine? I say I am dust, particles, and sunlight. I am the round sun. To the bits of dust I say, stay to the sun. Keep moving. I am morning mist and the breathing of evening. I am wind in the top of a grove and surf on the cliff, mast, rudder, helmsman, and keel. I am also the coral reef they found her on. I am a tree with a trained parrot in its branches, silence, thought, and voice, both candle and the moth crazy around it. Rose and nightingale lost in the fragrance. I am all orders of being, the circling galaxy, the evolutionary intelligence, the lift and the falling away. What is and what is not. You who know Jaladin, you, the one and all, say who I am. Say, I am you. Thank you for listening. Another round of applause for Mikhail Krill. We'll be doing Rumi at Sunset in a little cabin in Anderson Park in the heart of our town, right on winter solstice. You're all invited. It's been a crazy ride since the last time I saw you guys here from this stage. Um, we've all been in this crazy whirlwind of um, living our life and taking our chances and uh, dreaming things. For years and years, I've been playing the song Yell Fire here, yeah. right, as an anthem for us to wake up and to create our own change. And um, I even took that song with me to Nepal when I went there to go sing from Mount Everest. And I wrote, I brought the songs I wrote, but I also brought the songs of my heroes to play those. And, um, and then my hero, Michael Fronti, 
opened up the opportunity to um, allow any of his people that like love his music to record a version of his songs and maybe come up and play it when he's in town. I saw that on Facebook and I immediately thought, oh my God, I gotta try. So I tried, we edited this video together of me playing on Mount Everest, yell fire, sent that in, put it out there and, and asked all my friends to like it and go to his page and pop me up to the top of it. And, um, and I kept thinking there was a good chance that this was gonna, go, this was gonna happen. There was like over 100 likes on this video on his little uh, stream of conversation. Anyways, so I get to the place where um, it's the day of the concert in Eugene, Washington, or Eugene, Oregon, and uh, I go down there, not knowing whether or not I was going to play with him or not, but that, that was the show that was the closest to um, where I was. And I was going on a magic mission, and so I brought, I needed a Larson. And so I brought Craig Larson with me from Magic, and we just started driving fast. And it was the day that it was supposed to snow two feet in Portland. We just drove. It didn't snow. And um, somewhere around Olympia, I got the call that I was being invited to go play with Michael Franti, and I needed to be there at Soundcheck at 4 o'clock. And, uh, and thankfully, I was already on the road just driving. I got the from waking up in the morning not knowing what was going to happen to talking on the telephone with the tour manager and him saying, sound check is 4 o'clock. So we, are, we get there a little after 4. We uh, go to the venue. We get backstage. I tune up my guitar. I go out to uh, the bass player, comes back to um, bring me out to Mr. Franti to, uh, to meet him and to make our plan. So... As I enter, out, walk out onto the stage, I can't feel my feet. I walk over, I shake his hand. I'm completely starstruck. I put my guitar on, and, uh, and he says, so you played Yell Fire on Mount Everest. Man, um, you could have just done it from your living room. You, know, you didn't have to <laughs> go all out. And, and, uh, and he said, you know, I've got a couple of different versions of Yell Fire. I've got my studio version and I got my acoustic version and and I said yeah I know all your songs and uh, he said well what's your version and so I start playing my version of his song having a surreal moment where I'm playing his song to him he's looking at it and he kind of gives me this nod he's like yeah yeah we do it just like that but like 10 times as fast can you keep up with that yeah and so we start playing I can't hear my guitar I break my string and I uh, look at him, and he's like, well, uh, and he, he's got his other guitar. And for a fan, it's his Stay Human guitar. It's this, like, hand-painted guitar. He says, why don't you just play my, my other guitar? I was like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> I think I'll do that. And then uh, I put on his guitar, and it's like he's, he's seven foot tall. He's he, a tall, tall, huge man, plays barefoot, has long dreads. And his guitar has this uh, guitar strap that weighs, I swear, 100 pounds, all seashells. And I set it on, it hangs low, and for the first time I feel what it's like to like, yield a big sword, right? And then that one, the sound check was, uh, you know, the sound was great. I, I hit my A chord, bam! I could hear it in the, in the whole theater. That's the, well, you know, the loud, as a musician, you kind of judge your gigs by how loud you get to get, you know? And um, to feel what that's like. And so he said, well, I'll take first verse, you take second verse, we'll sing choruses. Bam, three, four, and then we're into it. And uh, we go through the sound check, things sound great. Um, and I, we get done with the sound check, and I said that I was really inspired by the fact that he had taken his guitar. This was in 2006, we were just starting Soul Food over here. And, and he took his guitar and he went to Iraq and he brought Yell Fire, the song there, to, and uh, revolutionary songs. And he met the people of Iraq. He, he started singing his protest songs and that they didn't want to hear protest songs. They wanted to hear songs that made you dance. And so he took that, that uh, Yell Fire and made it a faster, danceable song. It really impacted him and he, and he told me that getting a chance to play 
what I saw was when we went backstage, the backstage looked just like a backstage of a show that I would play. It's bigger. But it was family and tribe. I got to connect in with his son and his wife and the bass player who had been on tour with him for 20 years. And it all comes down to one thing for all of us musicians and troubadours, is that you got to really mean, you got to mean it in this world and be present. And, um, and no matter how far you get, like my hero Michael Franti, not be afraid to look back behind you in the trail and shine a light to someone else who is trying to come there too and, uh, and give a little opportunity to um, feel what that, that truth feels like. So from our tribe to his and back again. never starts with the warning. A revolution never saying you and no me. Revolution just arise like the morning. In the alarm, we got to wake up the snoring. Wake up. Wake up. They're telling you to never worry about the future. They're telling you to never worry about the torture. They're telling you that you will never see the horror. Spend it all today and we will build you Tomorrow, wake up, wake up, wake up. Three piece suits with bank accounts in Bahamas. Wall Street, Carmel, Emerson, you do this hammer. Tell all the children in the arms of the mamas. The F 15 is a homicide bomber. TV commercials are a mama field culture. The company circle looking like a vulture. Have a racket. Everyone addicted to the same gasoline. Everyone addicted to the Technicolor screen. Everybody gotta get their hands on the same green. From the banks of the river to the banks of the green. All of the rich is taken back by the needy. We come from the country, we come from the city. Play us on a record, you can play us on a CD. is fertilizer. The seeds that we planted, we can never brutalize it. Tell the corporations they will never globalize it. Like Peter Tosh says, legalize it. Boys and the girls in the face and the travel. One of the new figures in it makes you want to rebel. Throw your hands up and take it to another level. Never, ever, ever make a deal with the devil. Yell fire. Whoa, 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 whoa. Starts with the warning. A revolution never sent you a no man. Revolution just arise like the morning. Ring the alarm, we got to wake up the snoring. A revolution never starts with the warning. A revolution never sent you a no man. A revolution just arise like the morning. Ring the alarm, we got to wake up the snoring. Yeah. Hey, thanks, guys. It's nice to be here tonight playing. I need his guitar. Um, would you call Michael's tour manager? I have the n number in my phone. It's uh. <laughs> oh, right, oh, yeah, okay, Kevin. Of course, of course. I, you know. Yeah. Um, the opening act uh, for for Michael Franti was this guy named Ethan Tucker, and I saw him play with him during Marymore when they came through and did the the Franti tour there this summer. He lives in um, Olympia, so uh, we've been passing uh, gig opportunities back and forth between our hometowns, and I've invited him to come in 
and play uh, first Friday of the month with me here. I'm going down to Olympia in the next few months to play there. And, um, and uh, I asked him, how did you get a chance to open up for Michael Fronty? And s he said, you know, ever since I was young, I liked listening to him. Or I liked his music. I would go early to the shows backstage and say, hey, man, you got to check my stuff out. I'm good, too. And Michael Fronti would be like, yeah, okay, okay, I'm setting things up. And then he'd come to the next show and do the same thing, come to the next show and do the same thing. And then finally, he brought his guitar and he was like, let me just play you a song. So Michael said, okay, sits back, he plays him a song, and he goes, well, play me another one. And then that was the beginning of their friendship. They're good friends now, and, uh, and he's been on the last few tours with them. That moment, that lesson of unless you knock on the door of your dreams, no one's going to hand them out to you. And so that was the lesson I took away from that day that I want to pass to my family and my tribe is to um, show up, open the door yourself, and um, be, be present to that. So um, take a moment to turn the stage over to Betsy for a little bit of crazy cello. Mm -hmm. oh, crazy. It's not what I planned. But <laughs> Well, coming after uh, after Yell Fire, this is going to be kind of more chill. Um, <clears throat> crazy chill, yeah. So, let's see. Which one am I doing first? Okay, that one. So, I think I'm actually a tree. Not really a human being. I just bake it well. But uh, at the very least, my totem animal is a tree. It's an evergreen tree. I'm serious about that one. They couldn't find one. You know, they do all that casting thing, and they try to find your totem animal. It's empty forest. I'm like, that sounds right. I mean, not empty, but forest. Anyway, um, this song is fairly new. I... I dreamed it this summer, and usually when I dream things, whether they're music or just a cold dream, I cannot remember it an hour after I wake up, maybe less. And this one, I dreamed it, and I, I woke up with this very strong image and a very strong audio track to go with it, and I ran down to my studio, and fortunately everything was hooked up, and I just dived in and recorded it before it got away. So the image was that of an evergreen forest um, right after a northwest rainstorm that uh, the rain is still dripping from the trees but the sun is out now and so the sun is turning all these raindrops into glistening gems and the sun coming through the trees onto the thick ground cover there's these great dollops of sun falling onto these leaves and the whole forest is alight and the trees are very much awake and they're singing and in the dream, I'm one of them. So this is Dreaming of Trees.
you. So, so I recognize a lot of faces here, so many of you have probably seen me do this before, but for those of you who have not, um, obviously there's only one cello up here, and uh, all the other cellos are me, and I can clone myself. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to figure out how to harness that ability to like do the laundry and the dishes and also update my website at the same time. So when I figure that out, I'll let you know. But anyway, this, this cloning device is called the Looper, and it's a live recording device um, that I use to play a phrase, record it immediately, play it along back, and play along with it. And I can layer and unlayer whatever the reverse of layer is. Anyway, um, using features, it has a lot of features. And sometimes I forget where I put things, which makes it interesting. But uh, that's what improv is for. So, and most of that was improvised, except for the things I, that I set up at the beginning that I do pretty much the same way every time. So usually when I do this, it's all live. But uh, every once in a while, I cheat. Um, and I have a couple of songs that I, I have a that have a pizzicato backline. And I thought, well, geez, I don't want to make people sit here while I play the whole pizzicato thing. And you just kind of go, oh, come on now. And so I thought, well, I can't do these live. And my son said, sure you can. Just, just do the back line. I said, well, it's cheating. He said, no, it's like a cooking show. Like, a cooking show. And he said, yeah, you know, they show you how to make the cake, and then they put it in the oven, and they don't make you sit there for a half an hour while the cake bakes. They go, and then, ta-da, here's how the cake looks. And they pull out magically this baked cake, and then they show you how to frost it. And I go, okay, that's fair. So, I don't know, cello cooking? No, 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 it's okay, I'm not doing that. But uh, I have pre-baked the pizzicato for you, so everything else is live. But uh, anyway, this next song, well, I, I particularly wanted to play it because of the change in, in climate between, I think it was today and yesterday and like last week. And I am a weather wimp. And that last cold spell was really hard, and it was... I was cold all the time, and but it was sunny, which was nice. I appreciated that. But I love, I love the Northwest climate, partly because it is so gentle, most of the time. And so when we got our cold gray drizzle back again, I was so happy. <laughs> and um, this is a love song to North Northwest's cold gray drizzly days, um, because I do love them. And um, it's called Gray the Day. And I gotta go change my looper here thing. <laughs> okay. And there are words to it, but Raven, this is Raven. Raven sings them, not me, so and his diction is terrible, so I'm gonna tell you what they are because you will never understand them from him. <clears throat> it's uh, gray the day, gray the hills. Gray the misted trees, gray the skies, but light my heart, nowhere I'd rather be. And, uh, and that's pretty much true. Wow, I have a ring in the microphone, not on me. Well, anyway, I'm not going to use the microphone for this song, so it's not important. <clears throat> okay, gray the day.
Thank you. So is, is there a violist in the house? So while, while Gilly is, is joining us and, and uh, renewing her acqu uh, acquaintance with her fiddle here, um, I will briefly tell you what we are going to do, which is we have no idea. We're going to make it up. And uh, it does not currently exist. And after we're done, it won't exist anymore. So, so pay attention in the middle part. <laughs> It's always D minor. <laughs> Cellos like D minor. My whole album was almost entirely in D minor. In fact, Grey the Day was supposed to be in D minor, and then I realized that if I did that, there were going to be like two tunes on the album that were not in D minor. Uh, so I changed it the night before I recorded, which was possibly not the smartest thing I've ever done. But, but speaking of albums, we have albums. I have an album. Clint has multiple albums, and in Like a Lion, that's me and Gelly and Clint, have a brand new shiny album that's only a few months old now. I think it's walking now. They grow fast. Anyway. Oh, and thank you. So, we still haven't decided on the key. Uh, we should call that one roll the dice or something but they're all roll the dice <laughs> roll the dice in a minor <laughs> tuned dice no so i think we need clint back there he is and Welcome and back aaron to stage, clint yeah. McCune. time of year in my house or the house I grew up in. I grew up in a little log cabin on Hollywood Hill in Woodenville. There was an old 
wooden piano that was huge in the living room. And around Christmas time, we would get together and, um, and sing, pull Christmas carols out, and um, see who remembered how to sing the verses. Um, and uh, I'd like to do a little bit of that with you guys now in the season of it. really good. I'm asking you to sing along. Now, I do understand that, I, that uh, unless provided lyrics, and even sometimes if you're provided lyrics, it doesn't really help because everybody, it's, it's what we love about Christmas songs, everybody has got the first verse and chorus down pat. You know what I mean? We all got the, f it's awesome. And then you get to the second verse and you're like, ma -na, ma -na, ma -na, ma -na, ma -na. Which is perfectly acceptable here at Soul Food to Manamana. <laughs> oh my god, I love you guys. You're a little sharp, Aaron. <laughs> Yonder bridge. 
beautiful out there. It's nice singing with you guys. This one. Right? You guys think you can do it? I don't know, right? <clears throat> Technically, I think key of A. <laughs> Nice guys. It's really nice singing with you. Okay. Now another one. I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> to do. Okay, right? Right, it's musical roulette. If I said right, you guys are looking at it going, what the hell mm-hmm. is this? Well, I think it is. Because you've never actually seen the word wham on your on the set list ever before. <laughs> wham! Now, when I was in eighth grade, Wham was... You go, go. Right, George Michael. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Wham, George Michael. And um, I remember in my first Christmas concert I ever played was in eighth grade at the winter dance with my band. And we played this song by Wham because it was top 40 at the time. And um, 
And so putting Christmas carols together for tonight, I have a 15-year-old daughter, Katie, who has never heard of Wham, ever, but she has heard of Glee and um, uh, Taylor Swift and whatever other pop artist. And so... Did he really? Oh, my God. That's, funny. That's the first time I ever played it, and I haven't played it ever again. And then Katie dared me to play it. And so... <laughs> no, I know. I, thought, I knew you thought I was joking. Girl. <laughs> There's few things that you really ask a friend to do. Wham is one of them. Thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> I did it, Katie. If you're watching out there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. We should have a... Yeah, that's a good Christmas break song, actually. <clears throat> I know. Right? I mean, we had... And here at Soul Food, we had this... Reta we have a reta had a retail place, right, where Christmas songs have to happen. It's just part of it. It's about Christmas buying. And when you're in a place that has retail, you need to play Christmas songs to keep it going. But you can't start before Thanksgiving. If you do, in the retail, someone who makes minimum wage can legally kill you. Um, <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's just, it's a deal that you make when you sign your first. And so um, here we always had the staff bring in, okay, if we're going to listen to Christmas songs, let's bring in your favorite Christmas albums and we'll listen to your favorite Christmas albums. And, um, and uh, tonight when I came in, the Christmas album I brought in is still in the circulation of play and, and it's this song, this album called Christmas Tides. And... Um, it's an album my dad wrote and uh, sang, and he sang when he was 70. It was the last thing he put out was this Christmas album, and uh, I still listen to it. That's the first time I've heard it this year, and when your dad is singing Christmas songs, you're like, oh. And then that little spot in you that wants Christmas spirit comes out. So I feel it tonight. That's why I wanted to sing these songs with you guys. And... Um, Maybe let's, we'll play this next Christmas song, our, our last Christmas song of the night, probably. Maybe. <laughs> no promises. You guys did play Wham. <laughs> but, but, um, but Clint, the last one was the last Christmas. Oh, that was it. That was the last Christmas song. No, it didn't say song. It says Wham. <laughs> 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 um, so my dad wrote a Christmas song, recorded it on the album, and... When you have someone in your life that's passed away and it's the holiday time, that's when you kind of bring them back into your heart a little bit and remember those moments. So for dad and for dads, for mamas and for babies, for family. Did you really? What a cool thing to say. Man, um... My dad was on television, right? And, uh, and you got to watch him as a little kid on a black and white television set. You were. You're a local, you're local boy. Oh, man. Um, I got that so strong in my heart of that uh, local and what Christmas means to be here. Doesn't necessarily mean snow. Didn't mean whatever happened last week, that ice. That it, it doesn't normally mean that. But... Um, means a lot of rain and mist and that smell of the cedars I miss the sound of Christmas tides the cry of gulls the fairy rides I wish I were Wish I might be going home again tonight. Oh, where have they gone? The things I knew. The court they pass so quickly by the sight. of long ago Oh, Christmas tides Oh, Christmas tides The old familiar memories rise Christmas tides Lit by candlelight and names that saw 
with soft caress like bogus shield dungeoness and all the things I once held dear come back to me this Christmas tides, the old familiar memories rise. Oh, Christmas tides, oh, Christmas tides. Like ghosts that drift in from the night with faces lit by candlelight and names that fall with soft caress like bold shield dungeoness and all the things I once held dear come back to me this time Drifting down on Puget Sound, the sight of softly falling snow and Christmas tides of long ago. The sound of Christmas tides, the cry of ghosts, the fairy rides. I wish I were, I wish I might be going home again to.
Set got diamonds in my bones. Push me to the edge, but my will is stone. I believe in a better way. Fools will be fools, and wise will be wise. better way. 
some man who won't take a stand. But God is a cynic with a no better plan. I believe in a better way. Reality is sharp because it feels like a in my bones Push me to the edge But my will is stone I Believe In a better way Oh I Believe In a better way Sunset got diamonds in my bones. Thanks. Thanks. Is it ten o'clock? It's ten o'clock right now. Midnight Madness starts tonight, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> one more, one more. Let's play one more song. Plus two. You know, if you run them one into the other, they only count as one song. Infinite numbers, you're right. And we were traveling through space and time earlier. This whole thing started with a space time continuum. That was the exact, that's the last thing I actually remember. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> to the future. Oh my god. It's <laughs> just a jump to the left. <laughs> <laughs> stuck in the space-time continuum. There it is. Oh, ah, tuning together. I really appreciate that. Phew. Okay. Yeah. Tuning doesn't count as totally the last does song. Not count no. as the last it's song. just the preparation. <laughs> Enough for shooty box, yeah. Would you group uh, on the shooty box? Okay. With the mic not being the thing, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then bite your lower lip when you go to the solo. Like, that's how people know for sure. Yeah, totally. You already got it. Exactly. Yay. Okay, the whole song starts with you. You start. Yup.
walking on moonbeams. I was born with a silver spoon. I'm gonna be me. Miss Betsy Tinney on the cello, Aaron Brule on the djembe, Miss Gelly Wersner on the violin. Yay! My name is Clint. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. A blessing for you guys to come out and sing together. It meant a lot. And so, um, have a have a happy holiday season. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, CDs and uh, yeah. We have CDs for sale. Go check that stuff out. And, um, and we'll be, be playing tomorrow at the Redmond Town Lights Celebration. And then uh, next sa- Friday night, Gelly's got uh, her, book, uh, yeah. her book opening. Release. Yeah. Yeah, her book release next Friday night in Bothell at the Den. And so, um, yeah. Um, that's called Breaking the Bend. Mm-hmm. There will be music. Yeah, and there'll be readings and stories and songs uh, inspired by the book performance that night, and she'll be releasing her first first edition that yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. if you want to um, read samples or hear anything, um, you can go to breakingthebend.com. You can read it, or um, there's links on YouTube where you can see me reading some um, passages from the book. So, yeah. and then these folks will be with me, so I'm really mm-hmm. excited that they're going to help release that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And winter solstice at sunset at Anderson Park. Take a flyer. Remember that. Spread that like a whisper across the town as a way that we can come together and, um, and, uh, and be, yeah, be present. Love you guys. Thanks. Sleigh bells ring. I 